made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can make you mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch, but they had been close once, and he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. Hold the core, said the stone anxiously. But even though Renardo knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. The stone bothered him. He hated being told what to do. Wasn't that why he joined the rebellion? Wasn't that why he'd refused to be a soldier? He'd agreed to come on board only if he could freelance. The stone felt a bit clingy, and he had a feeling. He did not have his best interests at heart. The sage Calaveras had told him where to find the Sky Ripper, a weapon capable of challenging the gods. Even without its armature, the core would still possess great power. He would go there. The moment he landed the Farfarer, Renardo had a rare feeling of regret. It's not too late, he thought. He could turn around and sail for Zenobia's island. He frowned. Wait a minute. He didn't want to kill Zenobia, did he? Sure, technically she was the enemy, but they'd been at sword food school together. They'd never been lovers, but somehow they'd been closer. She'd told him every secret about herself except the biggest one, that she was the Emperor's daughter. No, no. Kill Sylvia, whispered the stone. Before it's too late. The sword food teacher used to say power gems were cheating. Stupid old fart. There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. Firewalls only let you through if they think you're hot enough. You almost never saw wild gogglers together like this. The toads had to train them not to peck each other to death. 
Gogglers. So these had to be Imperial Gogglers. That meant Ravens were up ahead. The stone hadn't lied about what it could do for him. With each raven he cut down, he felt a jolt of power flowing into his arm. You're weak, whispered the stone. The call and I'll kill you. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. It chuckled. But, but, but it's unstable. It's it poison you so much. See? With enough leverage, you could go anywhere. As he approached the core, the stone became hysterical. No, it's too much power. We will rip a hole in Spencer and time. He had a sudden vision of plunging his gauntlet into the core and dying in anguish. That wasn't his vision, was it? The stone had sent him its darkest fears, hadn't it? He had a sudden impulse to do exactly that. He raised his right fist and plunged it into the core. There was a rush of light. He thought he could hear the stone screaming. And then he passed out. When Renato came to, the core was gone. But the Iblis stone was no longer black, but glowing with a blue light. And it was silent. I can't hear you, he sang out. And you who? It didn't answer. Ha, he said. He had defeated the demonic gem with the power of his mind. Mm, he felt invincible. It was time to attack the Imperial outpost on the Nexus. Take the battle to the enemy. But among the huge crystals, there was also an observatory. A wise man would probably ask the scientists exactly what he had first. Hmm. How wise was he?